Hi, movie fans. In this synopsis, we will be taking a look at the 1979 Japanese cult hit, The Man Who Stole the Sun. This movie can be found on the web at archive.org. Let us know in the comments what you think of this one. As always, likes and subs are greatly appreciated. Let's go. The film starts with an atomic explosion and the image of the rising sun. We see a man named Makoto Kido, who is spying on a nuclear power plant. On this particular day, Makoto is enjoying his regular commute to the Tokyo school where he is a teacher. When he arrives at the school late, the students call him lazy. His nickname is Mr. Bubblegum because he chews and smells of bubblegum all the time. Makoto teaches class 3 physics and they are currently learning about energy and power. He enjoys break time but seems preoccupied during lessons. After work he goes back to his apartment, which is filled with scientific equipment. He lives alone but shares his space with a cat. He fills a spray can with an unknown gas from a cylinder. On the roof of his building he tests the gas on the cat and the cat is soon in La La Land. That evening an old man enters a police box looking for directions. As the policeman is helping him he starts spraying him with what he says is fly spray but it is actually Makoto and he soon gets physical applying the knockout spray to the policeman. The next day he's taking his class on a field trip to a hot spring. He reads in the newspaper a story about how a policeman had his gun stolen and that sleeping gas may have been used. Once they are back in Tokyo they stop at Edo Castle. Makoto is asleep when the students get back on the bus and make fun of him for always sleeping. When the last student gets on board, a crazy man with a machine gun gets on as well. When the bus driver confronts him, he starts firing his machine gun. Makoto tries to tackle him, but he fires his machine gun again and pulls out a grenade saying, I will kill everyone. He hijacks the bus and tells them to drive to the Imperial Palace because he wants to speak to the Emperor about getting his son back. The guards close the gates as the bus approaches, but he fires his machine gun through the window and throws a grenade at the watch house. There is now a standoff and Inspector Yamashita is in charge of negotiations. Yamashita asks him what his demands are and is told the sniper team has arrived. Makoto exits the bus waving a white flag and joins the police. He tells Yamashita that he wants to see the Emperor. Yamashita discusses his plan with the sniper team, which is basically, shoot when I shout fire. Yamashita is going to go to the bus and Makoto says he's going to go with him as they are his students. Yamashita tells the gunman that the emperor is prepared to see him, but first, he must release some hostages. Most of the students get to safety while the gunman surrounds himself with hostages and exits the bus. As soon as Yamashita gets the chance, he grabs the gunman's machine gun and tells the snipers to fire, which they do. They bundle the injured gunman into an ambulance while Makoto lights the wrong end of a cigarette. Next day at school, the students have new respectful bubblegum despite him looking half asleep the whole time. At home, Makoto has a newspaper clipping detailing his eight-hour ordeal. Inspector Yamashita is a hero, and Makoto is said to have made a valiant effort. Makoto asks his students about atomic power and lists some milestones in its history and of course the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. In between headbutting his heavy bag, he makes a remote control explosive device, spends time spying on the local nuclear power station, and makes a voice changer. We hear a voice say, anyone can make an atomic bomb as long as they can get a hold of plutonium-239 as he is drawing on a map of the power station. He plays around with the gun he stole from the policeman and trains while smoking. One night Makoto breaks into the nuclear plant, swimming in and cutting the wire. In the plutonium storage area, he steals a containment pod before having to fight off the personnel with the pistol and a flamethrower. He then sets off the remote control bomb on a transformer and escapes along the beach. He is explaining this to his students and tells them, of course, the security apparatus at Tokai Nuclear Power Plant is unbelievably strict, so don't get any ideas. In the morning it is all over the news and they are speculating who stole the fissile material. Was it a group or a lone wolf? A radio DJ called Zero Sawai is also speculating who stole the plutonium and is joking about it on her show. Makoto visits Akihabara to pick up some electrical supplies. He also collects other supplies to convert his apartment into a mini laboratory. Once he is ready, he opens the containment vessel and uses a Geiger counter to measure the radiation. 
The plutonium is held in suspension in a purple liquid. He decants the liquid into beakers and then adds a chemical to start the separation process. Once separated, he then filters the plutonium and places it in his oven before watching some baseball. However, unknown to him, some smoke is leaking from the oven. He gets annoyed when the game goes off the air just as it's getting good. The door of the oven blows open and a fire starts inside. The Geiger counter starts crackling and Makoto rushes to extinguish the fire. Once under control, he goes back to preparing chemicals. At school, he is teaching his class the steps to make an atomic bomb. One of the children asks if making an A-bomb is going to be on the entrance exam. He goes back to being completely absorbed writing about atomic weapons on the chalkboard while the children just do what they want. Makoto borrows some money from a loan shark type of service and purchases a furnace that he uses to melt the plutonium. Once melted, he pours it into a mold and once cooled, cleans it. He then cuts off the burrs and puts the shavings in a box. He then polishes the surface until it is almost perfect. He finally has plutonium metal. Exhausted, he crashes out while the cat investigates. The cat finds its way to the shavings box and eats some of the shavings. Makoto wakes up in time to see the cat die. At school, he sets easy tests for the children and falls asleep while they are doing them. Back at home, he completes making the atomic bombs. Yes, he builds two. Although one of them has a dried plum with some plutonium instead of the full load. He dances around to celebrate his creations. Makoto dresses up as a pregnant woman and sneaks a bomb into the Diet Building, which is the Japanese seat of government. Once he has planted the bomb, he calls the police to let them know where it is and then escapes the building just as the police show up. The bomb is being inspected at the National Police Agency. Dr. Ishikawa is saying that this is the real thing and with a full load of plutonium, it would be a formidable bomb. Inspector Yamashita arrived at the building as the bomber specifically requested him as a point of contact. Meanwhile, Makoto has booked a hotel room where he can spy on them and has moved in. Makoto is ready and phones them, knowing that they can trace his call in 1 minute and 50 seconds. Makoto says that he wants to make a demand, but it isn't that big of a deal. He wants the baseball to be televised until the end rather than cut off early. If they don't do this, he will blow up the ballpark. They have to get the Prime Minister to call the TV station, but they manage to have it kept on. Makoto is over the moon with the result and starts dancing around the room. He then calls Yamashita to thank him. Yamashita asks him his name and he says it is number 9, as in the ninth country to have nuclear weapons, after USA, USSR, China, France, the UK, India, and unofficially, Israel and South Africa. While Makoto's students talk about the baseball, Makoto sits writing a list of demands. His second demand is to end competitive entrance exams, but he scrubs it out. He notices that some of his hair is falling out. That can't be good. Makoto is out listening to his radio when he hears DJ Zero broadcasting in the street and gives out a number for people to call in. He calls into her show to tell her that he has an atomic bomb. He goes on to say he can do anything he wants, but he can't decide what to do, so he wants some ideas from her listeners. Her producer is not keen on this, but she eggs him on. Throughout her show, people call in with all kinds of odd suggestions, but the one that captures Zero's attention is to have the Rolling Stones play in Tokyo. Last time, they could not get their visa because of some issue with them smoking ganja. Yamashita is informed about the radio broadcast and heads down to the makeshift studio to question Zero. They tried to put a trace on the line, but the show has already finished, so he asked Zero to contact him if number nine phones before the next show on Saturday. Zero works out from his business card that this is not a prank caller and somebody actually has a bomb. Now that Makoto has some ideas, he calls the police to make his second demand. He wants the Rolling Stones to play at the Budokan. There needs to be a newspaper announcement within a week and the performance within three. He says that government can sponsor it and they might even make a bit of cash too. Zero visits Yamashita at his HQ and says she knows that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are trying to get the Rolling Stones to play in Japan. Therefore, she knows that number nine is real and he really has an atom bomb. She says the police are tailing her and they are treating her as an enemy. Yamashita says they were both chosen and they are on the same team. Zero says they're not on the same team and she's with number nine saying he's given us a dream. 
It's in the newspaper that the Stones are going to play. The radio is abuzz with Collins talking about the situation. Eventually, number nine calls the station saying that the government listens to what he says and then hangs up. Zero sees Makoto in the crowd again and decides to follow him during a break. He stops her and asks her why she is following him and she explains she is off the radio. They sit down in a coffee house to have a drink but Makoto does not say much and leaves. She keeps following him until he ends up on a jetty. They make small talk and kiss each other but he lifts her up and throws her into the water. She calls him an asshole multiple times and he leaves. This guy has got some game. Zero is now with Yamashita doing an identical reconstruction of number nine's face, so I guess she told them she met with number nine. Okay, maybe throwing her in wasn't such a great idea, champ. As she is viewing the faces, one looks like Makoto, but she gets them to quickly move on before Yamashita, who knows what Makoto looks like, sees it. She also has some of Makoto's hair that has fallen out, hidden away. Zero goes to the library to read up on radiation poisoning and learns that the symptoms of the middle stages are hair loss and tooth loss, followed by death in the later stages. Makoto gets confronted by his neighbor asking if he is going to get married because there was a private detective asking after him. After school, Makoto senses that someone is following him, so he decides to run from them, but just when he thinks he has lost them, the man walks up to him and asks why he is running from him. Makoto thinks he is getting picked up by the cops, so when he finds out it is the loan shark he is very happy, but the loan shark is not, as he doesn't have the cash. Yamashita is discussing a new technique to trace the phone call in only 50 seconds, but it requires shutting down parts of the phone network, which will not be popular. Just then number 9 phones the emergency line, he complains to Yamashita about not having air conditioning and says he needs the money to buy a unit, so his next demand is 500 million yen and 10,000 yen notes and he wants it by Sunday afternoon. He hangs up before they get the trace completed. On Sunday, Makoto is preparing for the money drop, it is very busy in the streets and he has the bomb with him in a bag. Yamashita and his team are waiting on the call to start the trace. Number 9 phones in and they start. Makoto tells him that the officers with the money need to carry big flags and must stand at the Jinan crossing in Shibuya. The trace team start cutting phone circuits to get the trace completed in time. Makoto tells Yamashita to wait in Cafe Nehru to wait for his next call and hangs up before the trace is finished. Makoto watches from a building top as they all get in position then calls Yamashita. Makoto starts giving orders for the bag carriers to run down the street and then head to the Yamano building roof, but is concerned about the helicopters and says they must go or it is off. The trace team completes the trace and now know he is on the roof of the Tokyo department store and call it in, but at the same time Makoto notices the phones around him are cut off and he suspects they know where he is, so he flees the area just in time to see the police arrive. The police seal the building and Makoto is trapped. He goes to the restroom to fix his disguise and notices his gums are bleeding. He goes into a stall and is about to shoot himself, but thinks better of it. He phones Yamashita to say that the bomb is under a table in the cafe and it is set to detonate in 13 minutes and 20 seconds. If they let him leave the building, he will tell them which wire to cut to disarm it. He tells them to throw the ransom money from the roof into the crowd and then release the blockade, which they do and cause mass chaos in the street. After he escapes, he phones Yamashita and tells him they can cut any wire to disable it. Yamashita knows that he has heard Nine's voice before, but is not sure where. Just as Makoto is watching them take the bomb away, Zero taps him on the shoulder and says, Ah, I have found you, Mr. A-bomb. Later, Zero is with Nine and tells him she knows where the bomb is being kept. Makoto steals a car for them to use. The bomb is being kept at police headquarters until it can be dismantled in the morning when they have the equipment. Somehow Makoto jumps through the fourth floor window, fires off a couple of rounds, rolls on the floor, shoots the lock off, and steals the bomb back, then jumps out of the window again, all without getting caught or shot. Mad skills. Just as Makoto gets in the car and drives off with the bomb, Yamashita shows up and gives chase. Zero is enjoying herself and records herself talking over walkie-talkie for her next radio broadcast. As the chase progresses, Zero calls in the radio station helicopter to film them as they are chased by more and more police cars. Zero is standing up out of the sunroof talking away into the walkie-talkie. 
As they are driving a truck pulls in front of them, blocking the roadway, they hit a ramp flying over it, whereas Yamashita goes under it losing his roof and the rest of the police are stuck. Makoto comes to the end of the road and has to turn back. He decides to play chicken with Yamashita who eventually crashes causing his car to catch fire and explode. Makoto and Zero are safe now and the helicopter decides to get some more film of the police. They hang out and chat for a while until the helicopter comes back. They go to meet it but as they drive they see Yamashita hanging off it. He shoots at them hitting the car which causes Makoto to roll it. Then Yamashita, the crazy mofo, jumps from the helicopter and somehow not only survives but is crawling after Makoto like some kind of Japanese Terminator. Zero is injured and dies in Makoto's arms, telling him to live long. Makoto puts on the mask and escapes from Yamashita while being shot at. It's the day of the Rolling Stones concert and the police are there staking it out. Yamashita is also there and surprised when he sees Makoto. Makoto says that he has a spare ticket saying the girl he was going to go with had an accident with a helicopter. Yamashita sees that he has a gun on him and lets Makoto lead him to the roof of the building. He disarms and has Yamashita handcuff himself. Yamashita says the Rolling Stones are not coming and it was a ruse to catch him. After a while, Yamashita attacks Makoto and gets shot multiple times. Makoto thinks he's dead, but no, no. Yamashita throws his arms over Makoto's head and drags him to the edge of the building and jumps off with him saying, it's time to go number nine. As they are falling, the most miraculous thing happens. Yamashita's hands slip over Makoto's head and Makoto lands on a thin wire that he is somehow able to hold onto when it breaks. He swings into the branches of a tree that break his fall. A crowd gathers around the now possibly dead Yamashita, where Makoto finds the atomic bomb hanging on the branches of a nearby tree. We start hearing the tick-tock of the bomb's timer. Then Makoto takes his last leisurely stroll in Tokyo. We hope you have enjoyed this synopsis and are now interested in tracking down the man who stole the sun. It's an odd one that is uneven in its delivery, but if it's not taken too seriously, it can be a fun watch, especially if you are interested in making an atom bomb. Thanks for joining us. Until next time. Peace out.